How well can my full custom 25 Creedmoor rifle shoot? In this video, you're gonna see some of the very first results. Gavin Gu here from ultimatereloader.com. If you've been watching the channel, you saw my recent full custom Piera style rifle build. This rifle is chambered in 25 Creedmoor. Again, to review, 25 Creedmoor helps split the trade-offs between 6.5 Creedmoor and 6mm Creedmoor. 6mm Creedmoor is more prone to wind. 6mm Creedmoor is a barrel burner. 6.5 Creedmoor is great for barrel life, great for bucking the wind, but it really adds a lot more recoil. So with 25 Creedmoor, you get less recoil and you get more barrel life and you preserve a lot of that wind bucking resistance that these 25 caliber blackjack 131 grain bullets can provide. The build, again, quick review. You're gonna to wanna to check out the full video. This was a great build. Terminus Zeus, three lug, Remington 700, semi-clone, full custom action, Bart line, one in seven and a half, twist, 5R, 25 caliber, barrel blank, area 419, hellfire, self-timing muzzle brake, love the brake. Very, very effective to tame recoil. And the self-timing feature is absolutely awesome. We've got the Foundation Genesis 2 stock made from Micarta, really great recoil absorbing characteristics. It's got the full length Foundation Arca rail. I have pretty much com converted everything over to Arca now. It's so easy to adjust your position and to add and remove accessories like a bipod or bag rider. I've made my own bag rider, absolutely love it. And we've topped it off with the Athlon Cronus four and a half to 29 by 56 scope. The rifle is, is awesome. The Trigger Tech Diamond Remington 700 trigger is set down to seven ounces. Absolutely love it. But in that build video, all I showed you was the break-in results. About half MOA, I was using Starline six millimeter Creedmoor, necked up with an expander ball, kind of a real crude way to convert the brass to 25 Creedmoor. And I just completed my first optimal charge weight style load development exercise. And this time I switched to Lapua 6.5 Creedmoor brass. This is with the small rifle primer. And I necked it down with the bushing die down to the appropriate 25 caliber specification. I'm using the Area 4190 press. You're gonna to wanna to check out my video on that as well. Absolutely awesome. So with this setup and with a little bit of OCW load development, Things have gone from good to absolutely great. So this time for load development, I made some tweaks to my normal processes. Normally, I'll either do the sort of Scott Satterley 10 shot load development where you graph your velocities, you're taking one shot per charge weight, incrementing it 0.1 or 0.2, looking at speed nodes, and then maybe doing some OCW around those speed nodes. I will also sometimes do straight optimal charge weight load development, where I'm just looking at a few different charge weights, I'm shooting some groups, and I'm kind of taking a look at where those groups look really good, and then maybe honing in on the standard deviation and extreme spread of velocity after that. This time, I did a nine different strings, and I reduced my shots per string from five down to three. A couple of reasons for that. One is to save load time for producing the ammunition. The other is to prevent an accumulation of barrel heat. And that just translates to time. If I'm shooting a five shot string over a chronograph, I'm typically gonna wait a lot longer so that I can have even barrel temperatures. And that means better, more scientifically accurate yeah. chronograph data that I publish here on YouTube and on the website. So this time I started at 41 grains of H4350. I topped out at 42.6 grains of H4350. I'll note here that I'm using a 24 inch barrel. So if you're looking at data from a 26 inch barrel, it's gonna be faster. I'm probably only about 100, 150 shots into the break in here. So we could also pick up another 50 feet per second as we go to 300, 400 rounds total through the rifle. And what I did to figure out what this starting and ending point was gonna be was I talked to the team at Blackjack Bullets and I asked them, what kind of results should I expect and what kind of low data should I start with? H4350 is just a staple for the Creedmoor class rifles. 
your six millimeter Creedmoor, 25 Creedmoor, and 6.5 Creedmoor. It just works really, really well. So I thought I would start there. A part two is gonna be 6.5 Stayball from Winchester. This is a temperature insensitive Creedmoor class powder that meters really well from rotating drum measures, that kind of thing. I could definitely speed up match style loading and potentially get a little bit more velocity because this powder is a little bit slower. That could end up working better. So if you have results that you've gotten with 6.5 Stayball, please drop a comment. I'd love to hear what kind of experiences you've had with it. So let's run through the results. I did a total of nine strings starting at 41.0 grains and ending up at 42.6 grains of H4350 incrementing by 0.2 grains per string. I shot three shots over the Magneto Speed V3 chronograph and looked at the group size for each of those strings as well. And what I was looking for was an SD at about 10 or below and a group size of about 0.3 inches or below. Sometimes we had one but not the other. For instance, string number three was 41.4. We had a group size of 0.275 inches, which was great, but we had an SD of 14.2. String number five, which is 41.8, had a group size of 0.295 inches, but we had an SD of 19.7, obviously not on a speed node there. String number six had an SD of one foot per second, pretty amazing, but the group size was 0.721 inches. I'm gonna look at that one again to see if that was potentially me as the shooter, because that's an absolutely phenomenal SD for our velocity. But ultimately, the best combination result was string number nine, which was 42.6 grains. It yielded a, an average velocity of 2,876 feet per second, which is great for a 24 inch barrel. Whoa. We had an SD of 10.1, hovering right around that single digit SD class of performance. And the three shot group was 0 0.050 inches. That's the tightest three shot group I've ever shot, especially with a game changer rear bag and a bipod here up front, 0 0.048 MOA. I'm gonna go back and we had a really good SD, but a bad group size, so I'm gonna shoot for better groups. And we had a good group, but a bad SD, I'm gonna reshoot for better velocity consistency. Will I up the shot count to five shots? Potentially, because that gives you a better certainty and more information. And ultimately, if I'm going to say that this is a quarter minute rifle, I wanna see a five shot plus group hitting a quarter inch consistently. So that's what I've got left to do for next steps for this H4350 load. Overall, I'm really, really happy. This Lapua Brass is obviously doing really, really well. We're seeing good results for both accuracy and for velocity. Some of the next things that I'm gonna take a look at are, I did make a modified case on the lathe. These are 20 thousandths off the lens. I might vary that a little bit. I do also wanna do the same exercise for 6.5 Stayball powder. That could produce even better results, who knows? I've also got some additional gear coming in from Wilson Tools and Gauges, Ellie Wilson. Uh, this time I was using a Hornady match bushing 6.5 Creedmoor die with a smaller bushing for that 25 caliber case neck specification. And I was using a Wilson chamber type cedar for 6.5 Creedmoor. I mentioned in the first video that that's not a completely optimal setup because of the chamber in that particular Arbor type seating die. Well, it produced good results here. I was seeing run out of about plus or minus one thousandth of an inch. Again, I told you in the rifle build story, I was seeing about five thousandths per inch. I think that was because of that punch up methodology I was using to punch up the necks from six millimeter to 25 caliber. I think that was a little bit inaccurate. And with better neck run out, uh, even with the same chamber type cedar from Wilson, we're seeing much, much better run out numbers. So I have a few things to investigate. If you have a 25 Creedmoor that you're shooting, I'd love to hear your experiences. Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Also, what else would you like to see with this setup? Uh, is there a particular powder? Is there a particular 
you know, case or a particular reloading technique that you'd like to see, again, drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Now, you're gonna wanna be subscribed with notifications because I've got more content coming up, not only with this 25 Creedmoor setup, but with Six Dasher and a bunch of other related scenarios. I'm really looking forward to pushing this rifle out to great distances and I have every bit of confidence that it's gonna be a real fine shooter in those types of scenarios. So, also, down in the video description, first link will link to the full article, all of the data, all of the results. Uh, I've got Ultimate Reloader shirts, the Ultimate Reloader store, and I'm on Patreon. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading. <laughs>